I guess it all started when I was a little kid. Especially when I got to be a little older, in my teenage years, I was never very much good at team sports, but whenever I went fishing, whenever I was on the water, everything just seemed to click. It doesn't matter what kind of fish we're talking about. I know where they live, I know how they live, I know what they eat, and I know how to catch them. Hey, Chris Hansen here, America's next top hooker. I'm 46 years old, I live in Lionel Lakes, Minnesota, not too far from Minneapolis. And just sat down here doing my second favorite thing, and uh, after fishing that is, and that's sitting in my fishing room and working on fishing tackle. Often find this can be pretty relaxing and a good way to, to spend my time when I'm not actually out on the water, when I'm not chasing after my kids. Before too long, I'm sure they'll be in here chasing after me. I've been fishing for my whole life since I was four or five years old. My grandpa started taking me trout fishing on the streams of western Wisconsin. and. Uh, there's actually a picture of the, of the two of us fishing together up there in the early 70s and then a, another picture of us fishing the exact same spot sometime in the mid 90s and cool thing is I get to take my kids to that exact same spot now. So all growing up, I spent a lot of time fishing with my grandpa and uh, in all the years that I knew him and the, all the years before I knew him, the guy never set foot in a boat one time and uh, that meant that all the fishing that I did as a kid uh, was I never set foot in a boat, occasional foray in a canoe or something like that once in a while but we did all our fishing from shore from wading different places probably taught me a lot about how to become a better angler once I became uh, a boat angler which I, I did by the time I was uh, probably 18 or so and I have two boats now so really making up for for lost time there but uh, after after uh, I graduated from high school I was lucky enough to get involved in the fishing industry and I worked for a place called Camp Fish. That was a kids fishing camp owned by the Linders, Alan Ron Linders up in northern Minnesota. So I acted as a fishing guide and fishing instructor for, uh, for a bunch of kids for a summer job. So every day was get up in the morning, take kids fishing all day long, maybe feed them something at some point during the day and, and, uh, and put them to bed. And then the scary part was then after we had the kids in bed, a lot of times we'd go back out fishing ourselves. I also, uh, af not too much after that, I went to work for the Orvis company, selling fly fishing gear in downtown Minneapolis. Uh, that led me to getting a job guiding in Alaska for Tick Chick Narrows Lodge. And that led me to, uh, I think I actually worked there, I worked there two summers. Uh, I ended up at a tackle shop in the Twin Cities where I ran their fly fishing department for a long time. I was there for over, for over 10 years. And uh, in my spare time there, I managed to uh, do some guiding, taught a lot of fly fishing classes. I manufactured and sold my own line of musky lures. I designed my own flies, some of which uh, are actually featured in the Umpqua Feather Merchants Royalty Tire, uh, tire Program, where there's such notables as Lefty Cray and Larry Dahlberg and places like, guys like that. So now, currently employed, uh, selling Markham equipment, Markham's manufacturer of sonars and underwater viewing systems that are used a lot by ice anglers, but by open water fishermen as well. And, uh, and we also have some point of view cameras, some really nice uh, cameras from VIO that can be uh, shoulder mounted or, or uh, helmet mounted, variety of things like that. And that's a market that's really becoming popular. I've done some point of view work myself this summer and it's pretty cool getting the, you can you can always get the shot with one of those so I think for right now I'm gonna get started on uh, on tying some flies here one of my favorite flies to tie if not my favorite of all time is a woolly bugger I love teaching people that are that are getting into fly tying how to tie a woolly bugger because it's pretty easy to make one that'll catch a fish and a lot of the elements that you use in tying this fly transfer over to tying other flies. Now I'm just going to take this hackle and wrap that up the body. 
keep that wrap spaced out nicely. I can already see this fly stuck in the face of about an 18 inch brown trout in a couple. Well, one of the reasons why I'll probably never be a great fly tire is I have a hard time concentrating just on one thing and, uh, and not getting distracted and wanting to move on to something else. Uh, but I did want to show uh, how I put a musky lure together. Uh, I mentioned before that uh, I design and, and uh, sell my own line of musky lures. At some point I was selling, eh, not, a, not a ton, it was just more of a, of a basement business, selling a few hundred a year, a lot of them just to friends and, and things like that. And it's unique that I, I make, uh, they're, they're called a bucktail lure, but instead of using deer hair, I actually make it out of coyote fur, and I've got a, a secret way that I, that I tie them, kind of bridge the gap between fly tying and, uh, and musky, musky lure making. So why should I be on America's Top Hooker? Well, I am from the land of 10,000 lakes, and uh, while I haven't fished all 10,000, I've fished a whole bunch of them and caught maybe not every fish that swims in Minnesota, but certainly most of them, as well as most of the other freshwater fish in North America. And uh, my uh, tally of saltwater fish grows a little bit with each year. I really look forward to all the trips that I get to make down to the, uh, down to the Keys, down to the Gulf Coast of Florida, fish down in Texas uh, quite a bit. And even down in Belize, down in uh, and down in the Yucatan of, uh, of Mexico, I've had some great fishing trips there. Uh, very memorable. Most of these flies that are on here, all these flies, have a story caught a memorable fish or lost a, a memorable fish. A lot of them are tarpon. A couple were tuna. This is uh, this fly right here. This ugly thing was responsible for probably for my uh, my addiction that I've gotten for saltwater fishing. I was lucky enough to be invited on a tarpon fishing trip down in the northern end of the Everglades out of Chokoloski, Florida. And uh, the guide was, was pulling us in the back country and we were looking for these uh, laid up tarpon where they'll sit right below the surface. And uh, I was lucky enough to get a turn up in the front of the boat. So again, the guide up on the polling platform behind and he's pulling the boat along and he's looking for fish. And uh, me, the intrepid angler, here I am. Uh, up in the bow hoping to be able to spot whatever the guide may see So at some point I hadn't even been uh, standing up there too long the guide says all right There's a fish at 11 o'clock. So what that means is straight off the front of the bow is 12 o'clock 11 o'clock would be right over here. I look out there. I don't see anything but brown water But I start false casting in the direction that he was looking on about the second cycle in the false cast like oh my god there was this fish that was so much bigger than any fish I'd ever seen before. I think it was like the size of a railroad tie, just gigantic. I kept the cast going somehow and somehow laid it perfect. The leader unrolled and that fly plop, landed just perfectly like three feet past and three feet out in front of that fish. I started stripping the fly and as soon as that fly went in front of the fish's face, you could just see that fish just woke up and just started tracking that fly. So I'm stripping the fly, stripping the fly, stripping the fly, and this giant tarpon is just tracking right behind it. I get the fly about halfway back to the boat, and this fish opens its mouth to eat the fly. Its mouth's like the size of a five gallon bucket. Closes its mouth and completely misses the fly somehow. Uh, I had the composure of, uh, with all the musky fishing and other fishing I've done where, I, I'm, uh, where I'm used to seeing the fish take the, the lure or fly, I was able to keep it coming, keep it coming, it didn't pull it away. Kept stripping, kept stripping. The tarpon follows it right to the boat. I've got like three feet of leader hanging out the rod tip and this 100 pound tarpon eats the fly right there. I set the hook just by lifting up. Now all this fly line, like 60, 70 feet of fly line that I just stripped in all runs out the guides all in a giant ball in a giant tangle. I can't believe that it didn't like take the tip of the rod or break something on, on the way out. But the fish ran like a hundred yards just jumping the whole way, just flying out of the water over and over again. And uh, you know, I ended up fighting that thing for about maybe 40 minutes or so. And uh, I, I had it right to the boat a few times. And uh, I had it right up to the boat on one particular time and made one last run, ran out there about 50 yards and boop, nothing, came off. So reeling in all the line and uh, I've, uh, I've been hooked up on giant tarpon uh, a number of times since then and, and when, uh, when you've been fighting one of those things for 30, 40 minutes or more, when, when it's over, whether you landed the fish or whether it came off, um, I'm always good with it. Just all right, it's, uh, it, it's over because it's, it's a lot of work. And uh, yeah, bring it all the way in. The fly just uh, just came out, and uh, the fly is really particularly. It was wasn't that good of a looking fly to start with, 
and uh, really bad looking now because a catfish got a hold of it when uh, my buddy was fishing with it a little bit later. But uh, I get so excited just thinking about the uh, saltwater fishing for, for tarpon and all those uh, other kinds of fish like that. I can't wait for the next time I get to go down there. So I got my start fishing trout, local creeks, fishing bullheads, sunfish in the local ponds. Went on to do uh, a lot of different kinds of fishing. Always been best known for my fly fishing ability, uh, teaching classes in that and guiding and, uh, and those kind of things. And you know, I get real excited thinking about saltwater fly fishing. As I look back on my life, I, I, I've noticed cycles where, like I went through a musky phase where I just could not possibly get enough musky fishing in. It's all I wanted to do all summer. I'd get out and, and throw baits hard all day long. And uh, after a number of years of doing that, somehow that kind of uh, changed into, I started fishing bass a lot more, not necessarily the fly rod, but fishing like bass tournaments. And I actually got pretty good at fishing bass tournaments uh, in, in uh, a couple of uh, events that, where I really applied myself ended up doing well both in some individual and in some team events. Um, now that I've got some kids I don't really quite have the time to be uh, to, to put it on the water to be competitive on either of those things and I've almost kind of gone full circle now and, and gone back dialing it back a little bit doing uh, doing more trout fishing again uh, actually doing a lot of pan fishing the, the, the kids certainly like that I've been getting into walleye fishing uh, a little bit more which wasn't which was something I never thought that I would do but it, it's it's a new adventure for me and I, I fish for catfish I fish for sturgeon and you know I think that's why I'll be such a great competitor on America's top hooker I just I can't imagine that there's anybody else that would be able to come to the table with all the different kinds of fishing skills that I have. When it comes to running nets or traps, mm, well, I don't know so much about that, but you know what? Fishing is fishing, and uh, you put me on a body of water that has fish, I probably already know about that fish, what its life cycle is like, and I, I would be able to know where that fish would be located, and you give me whatever gear I, I have to use, and I will go and catch those fish.